Hi guys, I just wanted to do a, a, a kind of a practice question on the male reproductive system. So one of the things that we've talked about, especially in our notes, I think on page three, we talked about the value of printing out these diagrams uh, multiple times and then rewriting them and memorizing where these structures are located on a diagram. More so than probably any other unit, this uh, reproductive system, chapter 14, really utilizes a lots of diagrams on the exam so probably a good practice to get into uh, we also talk about printing them off labeling the structures even putting some of the functions beside that just a fast a fast version of some of the functions of these parts and then coloring the individual structures and uh, a lot of times you'll be surprised you'll be in a test environment and you'll remember the color might not remember the structure but once you remember the color that opens up a file that allows you to retrieve the information that you're looking for so color really does help anchor some of these concepts into long-term memory so good idea to you know, to color the first one anyways, and then just practice rewriting the structures, finding the structures on the diagram. So just to exemplify that, let's just take a look at a practice question. So here we see a diagram, and of course, like I say, in this particular unit, there's going to be lots of them. Uh, but this one here says, use the information to answer just the next question. So we've talked about that before. Uh, always pay attention to that because sometimes it will be referring to the next two or three questions. So you want to remember that this material is going to help you answer the following questions. This one, however, is just the next one here. So when I see a diagram like that, I always encourage my students to just label it really quickly. Uh, you do have lots of time, especially on the midterm and the final. Uh, midterm you get two hours, final you get three hours, there's no written response question. So that does give you a lot of time to kind of make some of these type of notes and that on the side of your on the side of your test. So this one here really quickly, if we take a look at number one, we see that number one, of course, is the prostate gland. And we know the prostate gland uh, provides mucus. Uh, and it's an alkaline mucus uh, contributing to the semen. Okay, and it's an alkaline, just to go over that really quickly, but it's an alkaline. Alkaline is a buffer to acids. So we know that the male urethra right here and also the woman's vagina is a very hostile, acidic environment. So for that sperm to be able to survive, it has to mix with the semen uh, that's provided by the prostate, and then we'll talk about some of the other glands that provide that as well. Uh, but it provides the buffer to help neutralize the acidity so that sperm could actually survive in those environments. Uh, we know that there's two other structures that provide the, or contribute to the semen, and that's this one here. It's not labeled, but uh, this is the, um, of course, this would be the seminal vesicles. And that's providing the fructose or the fructose that gives the sperm the energy um, to be able to, uh, uh, you know, to swim. So it's motility, so it's able to find the actual egg in the oviduct. Uh, and the other one is this guy right here, is the cowpers. Now these ones, they didn't ask you to label, but always a good idea because you might see these questions pop up in another question down uh, uh, later on in the test. So it's always a good idea, maybe just to label some of those really quickly. Number two though, they do want you to label and that one is the ductus deferens. Also known as the vas deferens. And we know this is the one that uh, is the channel or the pathway for which sperm can make its way towards the ejaculatory duct and then towards the uh, urethra and then um, uh, into the vagina, if you're lucky, I guess. Uh, number three here is this structure that's right above the testes, and that would be the epididymis. Now, by the way, this vast deference or these ductus deference uh, kind of have a very similar function to the female oviduct or fallopian tubes in the, fa in the fact that they both transport uh, sex cells. 
And uh, you'll see that in another question as well. Sometimes they'll ask you to look at similarities and differences between the male and female reproductive system. But this epididymis, we know that this is where the sperm matures. Okay, so that's where it's actually going to get its tails. And uh, it then after that is able to be motile. It can actually move and swim. Uh, number four, of course, is the testes. So this is the male gonads. And really quickly, if we put just a couple of notes in there, we know that it's going to produce testosterone. Okay, the male uh, reproductive hormone. And also is the site of sperm production. And we know specifically that would be the seminal vesicles, or uh, uh, sorry, the seminiferal tubules, and where testosterone is specifically made is in the interstitial cells uh, that are found between the uh, uh, between the sem uh, seminiferal tubules. Okay, so just some quick real, uh, little notes like that, uh, kind of just unjar some of the material that's locked away in there. And let's take a look at the question now. So it says, match each of the structure of the male reproductive system numbered above with its function or site. So function or site is given below. And it says, record your answer as a four digit number. So make sure you pay attention to that. I, I'm always surprised when marking some of these exams that they don't read that part of it and they only put two or three here. But make sure you pay attention to how, uh, how many digits your answer is going to be. So let's take a look at the actual question. It says structures are on top and right below are the function or the site uh, right below the structure. So it says produces testosterone. If we take a look at our notes, you can see testosterone right here. What produces it, of course, is the testes, which on this diagram is labeled as number four. Uh, produces the majority of seminal fluid. So we said that the three structures that provide or contribute to the seminal fluid is the seminal vesicles, this one here, but again, wasn't required to label on this particular diagram. And the cowpers, again, not required to label. And the only one that is, is number one, the prostate. So just by process of elimination, we know that, and maybe we didn't know that, that it contributed the majority of it, but we can use a process of elimination to come up with the fact that it must be the prostate that uh, does this. Uh, the site of sperm maturation. So right inside that name, you can see mature. Take a look at our notes here that we just did on the side. Sperm maturity, of course, happens at, at the epididymis, which is labeled number three. Uh, last one is the site of a vasectomy. So vasectomy uh, is kind of the male version of contraception to prevent pregnancy. So of course that happens at the ductus deferens or the vas deferens where we will cut those vas deferens and sperm is unable to mix with the semen. So a lot of people wonder when they do a vasectomy, are they able to uh, have an orgasm if they can still ejaculate? Well, the answer is yes, but there would be no sperm within that semen. Okay, so that, according to this diagram, is labeled as number two. So just be careful when you transfer this four digit answer, make sure it's in that order and that you bubble in the correct, uh, uh, the correct, uh, you know, the connect, uh, correct bubbles in your numerical response section of your of your midterm or your final. Okay, if you have any questions about that, uh, get a hold of me either, like I say, through email is probably the best way. We can go over any of that. If not, uh, good luck on your exam, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.